Hey guys, it's Mrs. Shannon here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to actually go over um, some clarifying notes for cellular respiration, metabolism, photosynthesis, and specifically targeting the case study that you were working on. And when I say the case study, it's the monarchs and milkweed. A case study is simply applying what you are learning to a real world investigation. Um, many of you are familiar with monarchs. You can see them right here. Um, we see them all around us. Um, and monarchs are sort of an indicator species of an ecosystem and the health of an ecosystem. And in fact, uh, there's a bunch of models that are showing that um, monarch populations are changing, in fact, possibly decreasing. Um, but that's a different story, a different case study. Um, what we're going to do is look at the relationship, though, between monarchs and milkweed in this case study. And in order to understand it, we need to know a little bit about um, some of the science behind metabolic processes and pathways. So um, first things first, when you're reading it, you should have seen that it was a narration to people um, having a discussion, looking up some information. And actually, I wanted to bring you over to this one. Um, and I've highlighted a couple of points here. Um, one of them is uh, they learned that the monarch butterfly feeds on nectar of milkweed. Nectar is a very high sugar concentrated um, solution that are produced by plants. Um, in this case, we're looking at milkweed. And the reasoning is to build up energy reserves in the form of lipids. Now you have not encountered the word lipids yet. Um, Lipids are a different type of molecule found in the body, different than carbohydrates. And we'll talk more about that or you will learn more about that um, as, as we're done with ecology. But what you should notice is that it has something, even if you don't know what lipids deal with or what exactly exactly a lipid is, you should notice that it has to do with energy reserves or building up this like reservoir of energy. So I'll talk about that in a minute. The other thing here that's really important to put, uh, point out is that it talks about the relationship between cellular respiration and photosynthesis here. And hopefully you guys have seen that connection over and over. Um, how plants make sugar and how cells use the sugar to produce ATP. ATP is the energy currency. It's the money for um, that you can spend on energy within the body. Okay, so I'm going to kind of go back and forth between this case study as well as uh, this little jam board here, simply because I can write on the jam board. I guess I could have written on the other one, but I'm also going to share the jam board as it is with you in case you just want to refer to this later on. So really quickly, um, I know the question comes up about metabolism and what the heck a metabolic pathway is. So remember, um, we talked about characteristics of life. Um, at the beginning of the year. We watched an Amoeba Sisters, we did a live version, we did the Red Wiggler, and one of the um, characteristics of living things is that um, they show metabolism, okay? They have a metabolism, meaning metabolism is simply the sum of all the chemical reactions. So it's all, whoopsie, I'm not on the pen. So metabolism is all chemical I guess I'm not. Let me see if I can zoom in. There we go. Reactions in the body. Okay. Now, remember, a chemical reaction is when you have either molecules coming together and forming new products, or you have um, molecules that are breaking apart. Um, in each case, energy is either used or released, okay? So it involves energy, anything to do with energy. Because in each chemical reaction, energy is either released back into the body or it's absorbed in order to form new bonds. Okay? Okay, so I'm saying released or absorbed um, through the formation. So the key here is it involves energy and chemical reactions. Now, we have talked about two of these main processes, and um, they include photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Some of you guys have really nice handwriting on these Chromebooks. I don't think I do this often enough.
Now notice this word synthesis. Synthesis means to put together. If you synthesize something, you're putting something together. If you're synthesizing music, you're putting together maybe a medley um, on your instrument. Or um, if you're synthesizing an essay, you are writing an essay, creating it. So it's to build it, to put it together. So I'm just gonna put to build slash put together. Okay, and so in one of these processes, photosynthesis, we're using photons, we're using light particles to build molecules, okay? So we are building up molecules, and in this case, molecules of sugar, thanks to the light um, photons that are coming in. So in this one, the chemical reaction is building molecules. Now, the other main one that we've um, been talking about is cellular respiration. And hopefully you realize it's kind of like a yin and a yang. They're related to uh, the inputs of one or the outputs of the other and vice versa. But in cellular respiration, we take that sugar and we break it down. And within it, energy is released in the form of ATP. So whenever it's talking about a metabolic pathway, it's basically a fancy way for saying some sort of process that either builds things in chemical reactions or um, breaks things down. We've talked about two different metabolic pathways. There's other bio, um, metabolic pathways, too, um, that we're not going to go into detail on. I think the word biosynthesis comes up in your reading, though. And biosynthesis is just forming, if you know what synthesis means to build together, it's forming um, life molecules. Um, so bio means life, synthesis means put together, putting together molecules necessary for life. And so photosynthesis deals specifically with building carbohydrates or sugars using light. Biosynthesis is the production of any, we call them biomolecules. And there are four categories of biomolecules. I'm actually going to skip to this last one. I'll come back. Um, there are carbs. I wonder if I put this down flat, if I can do it. Hopefully it doesn't. Let's see. Oh, it's not letting me. How do you guys do this? Let me try erasing this. There are carbohydrates. And that includes glucose and anything else that ends in an ose. Because these words that end in ose, glucose, fructose, sucrose, they're all types of sugars. Carbohydrates are essentially sugars. Okay. We also have lipids. Lipids are sometimes known as the fats. Um, they also have to do with energy like carbohydrates. The thing with lipids is that they um, are kind of your backup energy reserve, meaning um, they're like your energy storage. It's really cool. Lipids can store a lot of energy, a lot more energy than carbohydrates can, but it's a lot more difficult. It takes a lot more to jumpstart breaking down a lipid than it does a carbohydrate. So it's hard to do. Your body goes for the easy energy first. Okay, so this is the quick and easy energy. And this is long-term st storage. Yes, you can get a lot of energy out of the fats, breaking down these lipids, but it takes a little bit more work to start breaking it down. And so your body will go after those molecules after it's kind of depleted its carbohydrate um, supply, okay? Um, there's two other molecules or categories of molecules. We have nucleic acids, which are the DNA and RNA. And then we also have something called amino acids, which build proteins. Um, we're not going to spend much time on those two, but I do want to talk about lipids and what the difference is. Okay. So lipids, the molecules are much bigger. Um, again, they're going to be tighter, harder to break down, but they release a lot of energy. 
Um, sucrose ends in O's like glucose. And here's actually a picture, and I'm saying this now since I'm on the slide and it was one of the questions, of sucrose. Sucrose is actually, um, we call it a disaccharide, okay? Um, it is two different sugar molecules put together. We have a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule. Now, when this breaks down, if we can break this down through a metabolic pathway where we just use an enzyme and break it down, which an enzyme is just another molecule, but we break it apart, then the glucose can then undergo cellular respiration. Okay, and I'll go back to the steps in a minute. This leaves this fructose. Fructose could technically um, go ahead and form an intermediate and then go through it, but sometimes it goes through a different pathway. Sometimes it goes through a biosynthetic pathway to produce lipids. It just goes along its own pathway. Okay. So sucrose can be broken down into smaller molecules and some of the molecules like glucose will go under um, undergo cellular respiration. And some of the molecules, um, like the fructose portion, may undergo a different process. And instead of forming, um, instead of breaking down carbohydrates to form, uh, to release ATP, instead what it's going to do is go make things, okay? You're going to go make lipids instead. Um, so in your case study, I know one of the questions here, oh my, I guess I'm working from the back. Um, Uh, da, da, da. So where or how would sucrose enter the pathways? Well, it's going to be at the beginning here because sucrose is going to break down and then glucose, one part of it, can enter cellular respiration. Okay. And so that kind of um, where or how would sucrose enter the pathway? It's at the very beginning before cellular respiration even happens, before glycolysis even happens. Okay. Um. How are the intermediates of these pathways converted into lipids for energy storage during long flight? So I just told you the lipids are just another pathway that could be undergone. So here, when it says, how are the intermediates of these pathways converted into lipids? Well, sucrose, when it breaks down, fructose can enter um, biosynthesis and form lipids. Or, gee, oops, I didn't realize I was on a highlighter. We have something called G3P. Hopefully you remember seeing that from your Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction. It can also go into, it's an intermediate, meaning an in-between molecule, and it can also go into a biosynthesis pathway to make lipids. So there's, and it depends on what your body needs. Okay, there are genes, there are molecules that regulate what pathway these intermediates, these middle molecules are going to undergo. And it depends on um, what DNA is being expressed and what your body, um, what the signals are in your body to help maintain its homeostasis. Okay, so hopefully that helps you with number six and part B here. Okay, so let me go back here now, though because there's two other um, sections here. I wanted to talk also about cell respiration and photosynthesis. Um, the photosynthesis, you guys did very, very well on your modeling activity. Most people were proficient a, a B or higher. I'm very, very impressed. Um, so I'm not gonna spend much time going through photosynthesis because you know the end result is to form glucose. That glucose can then be used, the carbohydrate can then be used in cellular respiration. But remember, there are two parts here. We have our light dependent reaction. And then we have our light independent reaction. I call it light independent reaction. Um, and that's just sort of when I was learning about it, that's how it was always referred to. However, sometimes things have multiple names to it. And we name different processes um, after scientists who spend a lot of time researching it or discovering it. Um, and so this one has another name named after a scientist, the Calvin cycle. So when it's referring to the Calvin cycle, it's referring to that light independent reaction. And remember, here... In the first part, the light splits the water, oxygen is released, creates just enough energy, enough electron carriers 
to power the second stage, the light independent reaction. Here we have a little bit of energy coming over to power it. Carbon dioxide's coming in. It does the cycle twice. Each time it produces a G3P. Okay, and at the end they can come together and form glucose. So this is where the carbon dioxide comes in at over here. CO2, okay, again, I'm not good with the Jamboard tools. So CO2 enters here, okay, um, forms G3P, eventually G3P forms glucose, okay? And so that's some terminology. So when you see Calvin cycle, we've learned about it. We just, I didn't use that name. And I realized that after someone had emailed me a question about that. So that's my apology. Um, while we're at it, cellular respiration, okay? You should have seen that there were a couple of stages, three stages of cellular respiration. We have glycolysis. Oh, I know what it is. I'm not bringing it up high enough. Ah, you know what? Let's just do text box. Text box it is. Okay, we have the first step is glycolysis. Glycolysis happens out in the cytoplasm. Okay, all organisms can undergo it regardless of if oxygen is present or not. If oxygen is not present, it's really only going to undergo glycolysis. And there's going to be a little loop here to keep reverting back so we can keep undergoing it again and again. Um, and we call that anaerobic without oxygen. Um, there's two different types of anaerobic respiration. There's um, alcoholic for fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. Okay. But then if oxygen is present, we can go on to stages two and stage three. So in stage two, we call it, again, a couple of names. We can call it the Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. Okay, Krebs after a scientist, but it's also referred to as the citric acid cycle. And then from there, we have our third step, which is also in the mitochondria, just at a different location in the mitochondria, which is the electron transport chain. Um, I will take this, let me erase this. Okay, I will take my little pen though. And this is my, a little electron, not electron, my little mitochondria here. So I'm just gonna fill this in kind of like this because it's got all those folds in it. Okay, but you can see where they happen. I don't care if you know the matrix, um, like which one occurs within the matrix and which one occurs on the membrane, that's fine. But just that they um, occur in the mitochondria. The oxygen is technically needed for the electron transport chain. And the reason it is, is because that oxygen is there to catch the protons as it comes through. And as it catches the protons from hydrogen, it produces water is produced. Okay. In addition, we have lots and lots of ATP. So really quickly here in this, I wonder if I can change the color. Yep, I can change the color. Okay, there's only like, you have to um, pay a little bit of energy to get some energy. Um, and so you have to pay in some ATP to get out a little ATP, okay? And in glycolysis, you usually only net two to four, oh, let's just say two ATP, okay? Same thing over here. You only get a little ATP out of this, but what's cool about the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle is it's gonna give us enough energy to move on to the electron transport chain. Okay. And the electron transport chain is where all the cool things happen. This is what uses the oxygen, what makes it aerobic, 
water is produced in the process, but this is also where most of the ATP is actually formed, most of the energy. Uh, text box, let's try it this way. So we have like 32 to 34 ATP. So you have a net total of like 38 by the time you're done. Um, we keep talking about glucose as being the starting molecule for this. Technically, other molecules can be broken down and undergo this too. But every time glucose changes, such as when it goes to pyruvate to enter the Krebs cycle, um, every time it changes forms on its way here to the end result, we call those intermediate molecules. Same thing with photosynthesis. Every time our carbon dioxide here, our starting carbon molecule changes like into that G3P, we call those the intermediate molecules. So now going back here, hopefully that helps clarify primary product of the Calvin cycle. Okay, we know that's glucose. The photosynthesis, that's pretty much what you modeled. Um, it says, use your knowledge of the biochemical pathways. Um, how is sucrose produced from the end products of photosynthesis? Well, you know, glucose comes to, is what's formed, right? So glucose, one of those glucose molecules forms with a sucrose molecule, or forms with a, I can't even talk, um, bonds with a fructose molecule. That fructose is just glucose broken down. It's lost part of its molecule to something else, Okay but it's just taking multiple end products of photosynthesis to come together. Um, describing the metabolic pathway. So basically, it was talking about the three phases of cellular respiration, which are those last notes that I just went on. Talked about those two. Here, you're going to make some connections, a prediction. And then I want you to talk about how they're dependent on each other in question nine. So hopefully this helps. I emailed you out also a question asking if you want me to put up uh, a Q&A padlet, if that would be helpful to you. And I can go in and answer questions there or we can help each other out. Um, let me know if you still have questions, though, after watching this.